that's one theory. Mm, um, I think the most prominent feature of growing up in Europe, um, anywhere in Europe, is that you're growing up in a place where people have been continuously creating culture for uh, quite a few thousand years. So you grow up in a historical um, uh, landscape. The pressure of history is on you um, in every instance. When I was growing up in Rome, I used to play a little game where I would just sit in any spot in the um, house in Trastevere that we were living in, and I, could, I would try to imagine the Etruscan city and then the early Roman city and then the late Roman city and then the city at the fall of the empire and then the medieval city and the renaissance city and all the way up to the present and it wasn't very difficult all I had to do was go down in my basement where there was an Etruscan well and uh, where people said there were still eels in the Roman wells uh, and that were also at the bottom of the building that had been continuously breeding since the Roman era now whether that was true or not is for my childhood imagination it was a uh, it was uh, very useful. And so the idea that you are living in a uh, historical landscape of that um, magnitude, first of all, um, makes the sensation of the dimensions of your own life um, rather small. And, and it's an interesting smallness. It makes you um, feel that you're participating in an experiment, which is a human experiment, which is a... Uh, um, which is not so present-based. And uh, you feel like, in, very much in the way in which when you go into any cathedral in Europe, usually cathedrals in Europe are not only um, often in Italy uh, built uh, on top of the ruins or the not even ruined um, uh, remnants of a Greek or Roman temple, but the, the cathedrals themselves have been continuously rebuilt and added to over a nine or hundred or thousand year period, um, you also feel that um, all the work being done to contribute to the making of the cathedral by hundreds of thousands of individuals over a period of time is anonymous work. And what you have is this incredible model um, that uh, for history, which is the, the contributions of many, many people. Only a few really in any given great church or cathedral are signed works. You know, there might be a Michelangelo, there might be a, uh, a Chimabue, but most of the work, um, especially the walls of cathedrals, were built by many, many, many generations of masons, fathers passing the work on to sons and to grandsons. And uh, this feeling of participating in a human enterprise with that kind of humility, I think is something which I only experienced in the United States, um, I only experienced the equivalent of in the United States when I lived out west in Wyoming and lived in a geologic um, time frame, so that you know when you're around places that are like the Grand Canyon, um, you also have a sense of a dimension of time which makes your presence as a human participant in the temporal sphere of of uh, the creation or the dimensions of the life of the Earth uh, small enough. Uh, so one of the things that's a little bit um, um, difficult for me is is the sensation that the present tense of a single human life is at this moment in history so magnified and people are so deeply committed to um, the belief that their life in their moment in history, what we would call a very presentist sensation, is uh, very dominant, uh, especially in an urban landscape where there's nothing to correct, there's no sequoia, you know, there's no mountain. There's very little to correct uh, your sensation that your individual life, your career, your um, the uh, the development of your biography in your particular 80 years um, is the most essential part of your experience of um, participating in uh, the life of the planet.